Hi, in this video we're going to talk about classifying sensitive data in SQL Server. This is actually not a feature of SQL Server, it's more about uh, Management Studio, but nonetheless it's actually pretty important. Now before we can show the demonstration, probably it's important to understand why you would want to classify sensitive data. Why not just leave it as it is? And uh, one of the main reasons why we do it is because it is a legal requirement and in most cases it's also something that you need to do if you want to get certified. Now when we say certification, what we're talking about is things like HIPAA or PCI DSS, which are actually frameworks or industry standards that you need to implement depending on the industry that you're in. HIPAA, for example, it relates to healthcare information. And if you are an insurance company or some kind of healthcare service provider, you are expected legally to be compliant with HIPAA. And HIPAA has certain requirements stating that if this is the kind of information you're dealing with, you are supposed to ensure some basic level of security to prevent misuse, especially things related to people and the kind of diseases or uh, procedures that they're having. Similarly, when it comes to PCI DSS, which is a retail framework, the intention here is that when you're dealing with credit card information, when you're dealing with uh, customer sensitive information, you need to be able to establish that trust. And these frameworks allow you to be compliant with those uh, trust requirements that the industry has set. So typically what happens is in order to be PCI DSS compliant, you need to be able to provide information stating specifically where you have sensitive data located and what you're doing to protect it. Now, the first challenge you face in these kind of situations is just being able to identify where all in your system sensitive data is located. Now for the database, this is especially challenging because when it comes to the database, a lot of the time that's where the security actually is implemented. The rest of it is just the standard protocols like SSL, etc. But at the database level, you need to be able to put additional security. And to identify that, typically what would happen was you would have some kind of security uh, architect who would classify and uh, uh, give you details about which column should be encrypted using which key or which algorithm. And there were a lot of requirements around that space which used to change from time to time. The most recent example being obviously GDPR. Now, Microsoft has gone ahead and given us this feature where we can simply right click a database go to tasks and you'll see that we have data discovery and classification. Now before you can do anything else you need to first classify the data which is why we will click classify data over here. And when we do this Microsoft autom automatically traverses your table structure, your columns and based on the column name and some idea about what the data is it suggests recommendations to you on how you should classify your data. And these are most common sense kind of classifications that you can expect to find because if you look over here we've got a column called password which by definition implies that it's some kind of credential and therefore it's confidential. You'll also see we have something called username, which again, confidential and it's a credential. You also have things like service tax number, which is financial. Uh, you might see here in this case, we've got an address which is considered contact information, so on and so forth. So these are just some basic common sense kind of classifications that Microsoft is making for you based on what it thinks that column name means. And over and above this, you can also go ahead and add your own classifications. For example, I could come over here and click Add Classification. I could choose the schema that I'm looking for. And in that, I'll just go ahead and select the table. And maybe I want to encrypt the URL of their Facebook or LinkedIn profile. So I could probably say something like Contact Information and then click Confidential so that you wouldn't be able to get the customer's contact details through their LinkedIn profile, for example. And these are the kind of stuff that you want to be able to do fairly easily and this wasn't possible before. In most cases where I've seen companies they have an Excel sheet where they keep track of it and over time that Excel sheet just stops getting updated. Those kind of challenges are overcome with this feature that we have here. Now once you've got these recommendations you can just go ahead click on the recommendations and say apply selected and you'll see automatically that it's been applied and then once it's done you can click save at which point Microsoft now knows or SQL Server knows how to classify this data and this becomes useful for us later when we do audits because there is a capability inside the audit where uh, depending on the table depending on the column that's being used it'll actually show the information about how that data is sensitive or in what context that data is sensitive for example you'll see in my case a lot of the data I have here is confidential you can also see there is confidential as per GDPR or highly confidential uh, you can go ahead and then play around with it to kind of classify it. So you can see SSN, National Health ID, etc. You got a number of different types of bucketing that you can do with regard to the columns. 
When this is done, essentially what's going to happen is that now that SQL Server knows what column is supposed to be treated in what way, you get a nice clean looking report explaining to you what are the type of data that you have and in what context their security should be implemented. For example, you can see I've got for the majority contact information over here, I've got a little bit of financial information and some credentials. And that helps me then keep track of uh, where all I need to make the change in terms of encryption and other things. For example, contact information, I would probably hash it rather than encrypt it. But at the same time, when it comes to credentials, I'd probably prefer to encrypt it because that gives access to the user profile. Correct. Now, these are the kind of things that you want to play around with when it comes to data classification. And the fun thing about this is you can then go ahead and export your data classification that you've just created and then apply it on another system. And this is good for us because we would typically be doing this exercise on some kind of dev environment and then we can export the template, which is a, it's basically a JSON file, and then import it into your unit test environment, import it into your production environment, and therefore make sure everybody is in sync. This way, you have an enterprise level uh, security uh, uh, framework. Not framework exactly, more about enterprise level security dictionary, uh, classifying the different columns that you have and how they should be treated which makes the whole process of managing this entire stack much easier. Now, this is just one database. Typically, in a data center, you'll have hundreds of thousands of databases running on thousands of servers. And you can easily see how this task becomes unmanageable if you're trying to do it manually using an Excel sheet or some other kind of uh, setup. And that's why this is really useful for us. In addition to this, there is another thing that you could really find useful, which is the vulnerability assessment. So in this, basically what happens is there are, again, some basic security practices that Microsoft uses and recommends. Now, again, here it's a recommendation. It's not something that you implement. So you can simply right-click the database, go to tasks, and where it says uh, uh, data classification, you can see that I have vulnerability assessment. And what this basically does for me is that it looks at my database configuration, it looks at my server configuration, and then tells me that I've got certain checks that have passed, and you can also see that I've got certain checks that have failed. So you'll see I should have enabled transparent data encryption uh, on the database, which I haven't in this case because it's a dev environment, but you get the idea. And like this, you're able to go ahead and add a little bit more best practices to your system to ensure that, at least from a security standpoint, the bare minimum that you need to do has been implemented. And the good thing about this is that this is a great way for administrators to audit a very large number of systems to ensure that the basics are being followed. Typically, you would have some kind of policy-based uh, uh, management uh, policy created, which has to be evaluated. And again, that's a bit of a pain to manage, especially when you have thousands of servers to manage. But in this case, it's much more easier, much more clean, and you can readily just use this as it is uh, in your decks to kind of summarize the security layout of the entire data center. And that's actually a big deal for people who have to manage a large number of servers. So these are the two features I wanted to show you in this video today. The first one is obviously classification of data, and the second one being the vulnerability assessment. Again, once you get the assessment, you need to then click on it to identify what's the problem with it. And you can also go ahead and tell you if there are some solutions for it. So you'll see that we've got a couple of different uh, uh, problems I'm facing here and it basically gives me a command or a script that I can then run to correct the issue. For example, if I go to transparent data encryption, you'll see that it's basically saying that I should enable transparent data encryption and it gives me a link on how I can do that. And these things make the life of the database administrator or even a DevOps engineer much, much easier because they don't necessarily have to know in depth all the nitty gritty details that go on in the background. They can immediately start being productive based on the recommendations that Microsoft has given. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has been useful for you uh, to help understand why security should be implemented and how you can make your life easier while still being compliant. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you for watching.